So, welcome back, or welcome if you just added to the class and um, this is your first lecture with us at CCS 325. I have the following program, which is very low-key, simpler than uh, the last time. In case there are students who just added, there should be, uh, I have on my roster new, new students. So, I want to show how to get to the class website. And then I want to illustrate the various sections of the website. And going from there, I want to show you the syllabus and talk briefly about the main component, components of the class. I want to review with you the assignments that you find under week one. They're not due until September 8th, but I want to review them already with you. Then I want to do another in-class activity on the theme of cars, which in a way it is, is thematically linked to the first assignment, okay? The first reflection. I'll briefly introduce today's film. The first film will be The Love Bug from 1968. And usually when you have a feature length film, a modern film, then we will normally spend two weeks looking at a selection, watching a selection of scenes from enough of the film to get an idea. So it'll be love back this Thursday and then next Thursday. Thursday is the time we look at films. When, of course, we have short silent films from the early 1900s, then we may have five of them in one day because they are one minute to five or 10 minutes long, not any longer because that was the nature of most films produced early on, okay? So that is it. Especially during the demonstration, illustration of the website, feel free to stop me at any time, both to explain anything you see on the screen, but also if you have already explored any of the sections, you might have questions that derive from your own personal curiosities or need for clarification. Okay, sounds good? Okay. Um, so, as promised, this is what I showed the last time, that there are several simple ways to get to the class website. We're not a bright space. If you go to bright space, you should be able to see an announcement directing you to this class. Were, were you able to, to see that, right? No, no, no. I, I want to make sure because I'm not familiar with Brightspace. Everything I do is put an announcement. I, I didn't use Blackboard either. I haven't used Blackboard in maybe 15 years. It's, I don't find it elegant. And uh, it doesn't work like the rest of the world. It's academic software which is a category I don't understand. Software you need training for. Most people use a program without training. Why should I? So, otherwise, to get to this, which is done with the Notion app, you put on your browser andreafedi.com, and when you go to this page, then this is what you find. Just as an illustration, you find my self-portrait, done with a first-generation iPad and a little bit about myself and the site and then you see here you, you find at the top of the list of courses you find the Automobile and Society CCS 325 and you type that and you proceed. If you want to go a more direct way then you add to andreafedi.com slash 
CCS325, and there too, it's, it's just a, a one-line index HTML. You are redirected simply. This is what happens. You saw briefly for a moment the HTML page, and the redirect should work automatically. If not, you'll see a tag saying, click here, if the browser did not redirect you to the website. And the reasons why I provide these alternatives is that the real link URL for the class starts nicely, CCS-325- the Automobile and Society with dashes, but then you have a bunch of letters and numbers identifying the place on their server, so it's nothing you can memorize. Okay? And, and this is the actual link. So, let's restart from here. So this is the portal of the website, and the template is, is pretty much the same through the pages. You find some images from the period or other images related to the automobile. In this case, the portal also, also gives you a, a short summary of the main themes and ideas of the class. So you know what the class is about. And then every page has a go-to section that directs you to all the relevant sections. It changes depending on where you are, right? So if you're inside lectures and readings, week one, then the go-to also includes a link to week two, right? Because it makes sense. But this is basically what you find, a place for the lecture presentations, a place for announcements, the calendar, the syllabus, etc. So let me show you some of these sections. Let's start with the news and announcements because there are some important announcements I want to review with you. And again, interrupt me and since I'm looking at the screen I'm not exactly you're not exactly my field of view just just call if you want to stop me for a question okay so news and announcements go by most recent on top right so let's review together some of these last night I created Google Docs files for each of the students who had registered for the class by the afternoon of yesterday, okay? So by now, you should have received on your Gmail University account a templated message from me saying, Andrea Fedi, share this file with you, and a text from me that said, this is the file where you're expected to post all the assignments, including your final project for CCS320. Okay, and uh, let me see if I can go and show you one of those files. Hmm. I probably have to log in again. So I will not do it. I don't want to take too much time. I'm terrible at typing, uh, especially now that I, uh, I'm standing or leaning on the keyboard. But basically, when you open that file, first of all, make sure you have a file, that you have received a message, that you have a link that you can bookmark. And otherwise, contact me, right? In case anything went wrong, because it's a very tedious process on my side. There is no way to create a series of Google Docs files from a spreadsheet, which would be ideal. At least not in the version of the Google Suite that the university provides me with. So I had to go through the creation of every single file and then hit share and then select your email and establish your privileges as editors. But once you've established that you have a file, then you know, first of all, you know that that is only for your eyes and my eyes, right? So no one can access that file. 
not even with the link, just you and me. We are both editors of that file. And there, whenever there is a, an assignment, you put the assignment there. Of course, if you want to, if you hate Google Docs and you want to write your assignment in Word or a text editor, that's fine. Then you simply copy and paste your assignment there. The advantage to me is I don't have to use any kind of Dropbox, etc. Just a moment. Besides, I can review your file, your assignment, and leave not only the grade, but also comments that are specific to a passage, a paragraph, a phrase, a sentence, a word, a single word. And you, while you are working on the draft of your assignment, you as well can use the commenting feature. Right? You can select a paragraph and say, or, or the title of the assignment and put a comment saying, Professor, is this what you expect from me? Is this what you have in mind? Or is this enough? Or is this a good example? Is this a good analysis of, of this video, of this scene, etc.? And I get notified in my inbox through the system and when I have a chance, if I'm not in a meeting, etc., I respond, reply to your comment saying yes, or expand, or uh, reconsider this is part of the instructions, <coughs> okay? So that's where I find this useful. And I know that there are no blocks, right? The system doesn't stop you from posting uh, an assignment the next day or, or three hours past midnight on the day of the assignment, I don't care. As long as I find your assignment when I go check on it, which is usually the next day, the next morning, I'm fine, right? I, I don't go see exactly when the hour and the minute you changed it. And if not, I will leave a comment saying, when are you planning to finish this? I do accept late submissions within reason, meaning a few days, two, three days. And if you ask for an extension, fine. If you didn't, you'll be penalized, but you'll be able to uh, uh, submit that assignment. Yes, please. Uh, I was just wanted to double check. So for this file, do you want us to just copy and paste the text of whatever the assignment is? No, like like PDF or link or anything. Just no, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So either you go ahead and write it there, mm -hmm. right? Or if you prefer to complete the assignment with another program, then you lift it from that program, but you leave the text. You don't put a link to another file in there, right? Because okay. otherwise, I wouldn't be able to put comments. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. And then uh, you just want us to whenever there's anyone, just do it on a different page. Just put the newest on top. Newest on top, okay. Right, so that both you and I, when we open the file, we don't have to scroll down every time to find it. Right, okay. And I've pre-formatted, so I've modified the style of each file, right? So you have a format for the heading, for heading one, and a format for the body, which is normal for, for Google, the normal style right so that if you take care to use those two formats adding one for the title of an assignment and the other for the body then <coughs> the, the the text will be readable even if you use your phone and second if you want to go back to an assignment having used heading one for the title you can see an outline and instead <coughs> of scrolling you can go to the outline click and revisit that particular assignment. Let's say that you were granted permission to revise and resubmit, right? In that case, it wouldn't be on top, but you would still have to go back to it. Yes, please. And do you want MLA heading, any of that? Or any that standard any? you're familiar okay. with, but the assignments are mostly reflection papers. Okay. So, that kind of stuff applies to the final project, but the assignments usually don't require any specific kind of research or bibliography or sources. If you have sources, 
whatever standard you are familiar with, use that. If it, whether it is MLA, uh, Chicago style, or something used in the social sciences or the sciences, that, that's fine. It's, it's not, this is not a, a course for English majors. Okay? So make sure you have a, con a, a Google Doc file and otherwise contact me. And of course, I'm reviewing this next week. I'm reviewing the list of people in the class and adding more files as needed. And for the final project as well, it'll go in here. Because again, this way, if you work on your project ahead of time, you can put a comment saying, could you review your, my draft and tell me whether I'm on the right track or what should I do with this particular project. It's not a paper, we'll talk about it. Uh, it's not a traditional paper. That's why I call it a project. Next thing, every class is recorded and within one or two days I post the YouTube video of the class. As you can see in here, you can play it from inside the pages Again, it's practical for me because I put there, I, I paste the link and select the option of embedding. I don't have to write a single line to do that. And what I do on these videos, if we go to watch on YouTube, why should it be blocked? Okay. Are you connected Let's to the see. internet? I think yeah, so otherwise I wouldn't be that. able to see it. I think it's, 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 it's how complicated this is. This, this link, I should eliminate something. Let me try to eliminate this part. I don't like it. Okay, let's try YouTube in general. Because the, the video is public. I think the Stony Brook internet blocks like YouTube. Some not just YouTube, but like redirection. So if you're from one site, yeah, but now, now I have yeah, that's just YouTube. A simple YouTube.com. I don't know. I pulled it up on my iPad. It seems it's not blocking me in that regard. Okay. No, I, I just wanted to show you that I put video chapters so that you can skip a topic. So that especially if you are well, if, if you miss a class within two to three days before the end of the week, you should review the, the video of the class you missed. Don't, don't wait until November. Won't do, won't do you any good. But if later on, let's say, you want to review a topic for the final exam, then you go to a video and you skip everything else, the introduction, the announcements, and you go specifically to those 10 minutes or 20 minutes to review what I had to say on Herbie the Love Bug, or, or another movie, or a, or a novel. So, so, let's see what happens to play here. So yeah, you, you can still see the, 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 the topics, right? Core topics, and then the class activity, the general introduction, right? So I can go directly to general introduction, for example, skip the activity if I miss the first class. I just have an idea what the activity is about, but just watch this. Of course, quality, well, the projector is horrible, but it's kind of dark in here, so quality is not optimal, even though the camera on my surface is good enough. Okay, so I'll, I'll stop this. So, one, just one thing to add, you'll see it in the syllabus. The policy for missing classes is the following. After you've missed five classes, even if you're excused for those classes, after you've missed five classes, then in order not to lose points on participation, you have not only to watch the video, but put on your Google Docs file a brief report about the class you missed, Show me, showing me that you've watched the video, basically. I don't want a transcript. I don't want a point-by-point -point play out but some reactions, some comments that show me that you have done that part of the work, okay? And of course, 
you don't necessarily have to keep track. When I see on my Excel file that someone is at five or six, then I'll reach out to you saying, you're on my right radar, right? You're on my list for this. And, and those reports should go on the file, but in a timely fashion, right? As soon as you can. I like to include in announcements anything that is related to the topic that is current to show that we're talking about things that still make sense in our society. It's not an archaeological, academic, intellectual, intellectual class. Okay? So if you haven't watched, if you haven't seen this film, it should still be out. I, I recommend it. I found it more enjoyable than I expected. The previous film that was inspired by the video game, the racing video game, was Need for Speed in 2014, and it was eh, eh, <laughs> meh. As most video game movies are. Right, but, but this one was, was not bad. The, the, the reviewers trashed it, pretty much. And Gadget uh, published a, re a scolding review, for example. A few reviewers uh, said it, it, it works. Uh, I found it enjoyable. It's kind of long, but I did, that didn't feel long. Two hours and 15 minutes. So don't go early, because otherwise with the trailers it will be a three-hour ordeal. And it's based on a, it says based on a true story. It's inspired by a true story, loosely based. It's the story of a, a young man in England, who's an avid uh, Gran Turismo player, and he gets a chance to be trained in this academy where sim racers train to learn how to drive a real car, and he gets a chance to compete in the, gra in the real Gran Turismo championship, and then by the end of the film, he goes to Le Mans. In real life, the guy uh, whose name is the name of the character, really went to Le Mans, okay? So that's interesting, and I've added some information in here, the trailer, uh, a few links, and if you want to go and see it, and you care to write, a, I call them viewing notes, meaning things you noticed in the film that were relevant, meaning it doesn't have to be a review, a formal review. It could be a series of separate points, right? Some of them could be a one line, some of them could be three or four lines, but meaning, I noticed this, that they talk about, they, they use these words in reference to driving, or in reference to speed. Or I noticed that the identity of the character is connected to the automobile in such and such way. If you do that, I'll give you extra credit to be applied to participation. Right? And I'll offer that for, for different events. This is a good example of that. So on September 10th, I have organized, I am organizing, I'm losing my sleep to organize the 17th Concorso d'Eleganza, which has run successfully at Stony Brook for more than 16 years because during COVID they had to skip. And I hope I don't run the event to the ground. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty much working on this by myself without, I don't have a secretary for the Center for Italian Studies. For this very reason, I invite you to come on the 10th. It's Sunday from 10 to 1 p.m., especially if you live on campus. You could swing by and see the cars, talk to the people. The people are very approachable. The, the, they love talking about their cars. Right? You go to someone and say, I like your Maserati and talk about a 1955 Maserati and how it drives. Ask interesting questions, right? Not simply say, oh, cool, cool dude. Right? But engage them in, in some kind of fashion. And again, if you write a short report, just a short report, I can give you a credit. However, the second request is more important to me now. I need volunteers. If you are willing to uh, if you're here on campus on Sunday, actually even on Friday afternoon, I would need uh, some volunteers because they're delivering hands and tables 
and I have to store them away for the Sunday event where I'll be taking them out again. So if you're willing to volunteer, more extra credit and my deepest gratitude is, is being offered. And I, and I usually go there, this is the first time for me organizing this shindig, but I usually go there to take pictures and these are pictures from last year. The, the light was perfect that day. Uh, and uh, with the help of a polarizer, you have these nice enough pictures, right, that I, that I put on SmackMag. Okay? And you, you see every car, of course, has a description of the model, but uh, we We'll, we also have a best in show prize, so you can vote. And this year we'll have QR codes, so you can just put your phone and then vote for the car or the motorcycle you like the most. Okay. Now, still in terms of what is going on, this goes back because I put it there in August, every August, in California. Um, you might be familiar with a racetrack called Laguna Seca. And it, it's used for all kinds of races, but every August, around the middle of August, or past the middle of August, they have several days of, yes, several days of historic races at Laguna Seca. And within the context of these days, with a lot of spectators, but also a lot of uh, owners of historic cars coming there, they, they hold auctions, and we are talking, this year it didn't go as well as in the past, but can you guess how much overall, how much money was moved by the auctions in August of 2023? Almost half a billion dollars. Going down from the past, and in fact, they didn't have, usually they have very expensive cars, but this time the best was around 30 millions, I think. I, I found some in the catalogs, right? They have online catalogs, some of these auction houses. So you can click and see this nice Ferrari that went for just 8 million six a bargain. Right? That's a classic. 1966 is the golden era of vintage automobile. Around this time, between 1955 and 1965, you find the most expensive cars. Right? Ferrari GTO from this period, 1962-63, would go for 30 to 80 millions, depending on history. Was it an actual race car? Did it win a race? Uh, is it in pristine conditions? But even a Mercedes from this period could go, well, one, a few years ago, went for 140 millions. But look, what's interesting to me, even though the market is going down a little bit, what's interesting to me is that older cars are coming up in value. Look at this 1914 Mercer Type 35, 4.3 million, right? Or 1913 car for 1.6 and 1912 simplex for 3.7. Right? These are really old cars. There it is. <laughs> Not exactly a daily driver unless you are committed to this kind of things. Well, to tell you the truth, a lot of these owners put electric ignition on these cars because. Cranking up the engine is not very easy. You have to do it, you have to know, you have to prime the engine, you have to put some uh, fuel uh, in the carburetor, and if you don't do it correctly, the crank kicks back and you can break a finger easily, or, or even your wrist, God forbid, if you do it incorrectly. You have to do it in such a way that when the engine kicks in, your hand is pulled away automatically instead of the crank pressing on your fingers. So it's surprising that they sell, still sell for, for this much money. 
I've added this video, which you find also in the introduction. But I added a few more recent videos. These are all recent videos to show the interest in cars. Nicole Johnson is a great YouTuber. She doesn't produce a lot of videos, but makes a lot of views. And uh, of course, I have an initial uh, message about the mask itself. Okay, so moving on. Syllabus. So I'll skip everything you find in here, right? Syllabi these days are chapter, book chapter length. So I'll go straight to contact information. So I offer, what is it, uh, 11 hours on Zoom, but because I have a lot of students, not just you, right? I have other students, the students in globalization, studies to serve. And what I use is an app called Calendly. So you click on this and you find it in the calendar as well. You say, well, I want an appointment. The next available appointment is here. And then these are the slots that are available right now. 9, 9.30, 10, 12.30. And when I click on one of these, uh, then I just have to provide name, email, and if you want to, this is not required to fill, but if you want to, you can say, I need help with this assignment, or I need to go over a class that I missed, if you want to. It's, and when you schedule, you receive an email, etc., etc. I receive notification, the time slot is taken. Okay? Then I also have, of course, an office. And I, and I recently relocated to the Center for Italian Studies, which is around here, the, the other side of the building, E4340. Choose the Centuries days, 115, 215. However, as the director of the Center, especially as the new director of the Center for Italian Studies, I'm there at least four days a week, Monday through Thursday. So if you're walking by, then you can walk in, see if I'm available, talk to me. A lot of people, colleagues, do the same. Why not my students? And no textbooks for this class. We use primary sources from the period and a few articles that I, or extracts, excerpts that I prepared for you. So the only thing is that we also have, of course, we don't do all those texts. I, I change it. The only thing is that you see some of these films are available freely on YouTube, but the modern films are usually on, on Amazon and then also on YouTube, but sometimes you have to pay for them. So it's up to you if you want to review, watch again a movie for an assignment or the final exam. One of the questions on the final exam will be based on one of the films. I'll provide a short list. Okay, so provide a short list like three films or more if they are short films, but otherwise that is it. And uh, here are the grades. 25% is attendance and participation. Attendance coming here, participation, doing in-class activities, making comments, but including that, Included in participation, you have the reflections. Between four and six reflections, this semester should be five unless I cancel one. Right? And you put them on your Google Docs file, you have the minimum, the maximum length. Okay? You know that attendance is being taken using page of course I have to redo it because some students added I'm going to situate it now start this side take it down okay then 15% is for a brief presentation on zoom based on your final project the presentation is before your final project is submitted and it's understood that you're working on it but the presentation shows me what you've learned from the project and allows me, at the end, to offer suggestions. 
saying, yeah, I like it, but maybe you should do something else with this document. We're working with documents from the early 1900s of the automobile, but this time, this semester, previously we've worked with articles, now we're working with short stories on the automobile, which could be, for example, of the genre called motor romance. A man and a woman falling in love thanks to an automobile or an automobile ride or an automobile accident, something like that. So we do it the same way that I showed you for the office hours. At the end of the semester, last week and the week after that, you have dates where you can schedule your presentation, right? When you feel you're ready and you have plenty of options for every day, right? Look. So you can schedule your presentation as soon as you want, right? Because you can do it now and then reschedule later, right? There is a link to reschedule. That's the preferred way because this way we can interact this way, I can tell you, stop, hold on your horses, don't read to me your paper. Because I'll be reading your paper, I can do that. The purpose of the presentation is for you to present. Doesn't have to be perfect. You can put passages on the screen, you can share the screen with me during the Zoom session, put there a passage if you want to prepare slides, that's fine, but again, you don't read the slide. You don't have your paper in slides. And I've had those in the past. And I said, no, look, this is not what I'm looking for. Forget about this. Tell me in your own words what you found interesting in your project. It doesn't have to be a systematic presentation of your project because I have the paper for that, right? So it's just the most relevant, the most interesting parts what you've learned, showing how you've mastered the language, the concepts to talk about these things, okay? And of course, in early October, we have a full lecture devoted just to the project, and then from time to time, I go back to it, ask you questions. We have one reflection or assignment based on that to help you along the way. And because we have presentations of I have given my availability through the entire last week. The last week, we don't come here to this dingy place, uh, which by then will be much, much sadder than, than it is today. The end of August, September in front of us, summer is still around, but by December, you don't want to be here. So last week, we only see each other virtually on Zoom, but these appointments are individual appointments, right? One of you and me. The class is not there, it doesn't have to be there. So, and, and you read the rest yourself. The project is 35% and, and you have this page explaining about the project, but again, don't bother because we'll review it together in a few weeks. I mean, you, you can read it, it's not forbidden. But don't worry about all the details. And 25% is the final exam, which will probably be four questions, essay questions, a bit longer. Um, and uh, one of them will be about the film, the other will be about the readings. And I usually provide a packet with pages from the readings. Based on the question, I offer you potential examples because I want to see you being able to show your analytical skills. It's not your ability to remember exactly what happens in that scene where Araminta's husband is crashing an automobile through a bar. It wouldn't make sense. You may have the scene in front of you, and you can provide your analysis in your response, okay? 
and that's basically, I think, almost everything. I, I just, I'll just touch upon this. Of course, don't cheat, don't pla plagiarize. And these days, one has to add, don't chat GPT in, in some kind of form. And I know it's difficult to spot, but it's easier in my case. Because the short stories, the novels, the films, especially the older films that we're discussing here in this class, confuse ChatGPT, right? If you tell ChatGPT, uh, write me a paper, write me an assignment on the black motor car, and a British novel from 1905, ChatGPT will just dump everything that has black car in it. Films, songs, shorts, right? Everything but the actual novel, right? because it's not something where you find dozens of articles. Okay, so be wary that, especially for this class, it's a bit easier for me to spot because ChatGPT will improvise. And I have some funny example, even the last semester, uh, I, I had a French movie called The Man and a Woman, and I found this review of the film where the characters meet and hug on the beach, the man draws a heart on the sand, they kiss, but that scene is not in the film. It was completely improvised by ChatGPT or some similar bot, right? Based on the situation, based on the actual, you never know how, how it works, right? There is limited intelligence behind it. So don't risk your career, right? Because the consequences can be dear. In, in, in other words, to, to be more specific, I don't know if you know how the academic judiciary works. I've, I've been a member of the committee for a number of years. I don't have to prove that you use ChatGPT. I just have to show the committee enough evidence that you did so, right? I don't have to prove it beyond the shadow of a doubt. It's not a murder, it's plagiarism. If I can convince the committee, then you cannot just say, show me the evidence. You, you don't have the final proof. Okay, it's a preponderance of evidence for that. Okay? Not beyond the shadow of a doubt. Okay, so enough with these things. Uh, let me show you the calendar. Of course, you know what a calendar is, but just to show you what purpose it serves. Day after day, you can check here the various events. I suggest you use this because if there is a change in my schedule, for example, I have a meeting, I have to cancel an office hour, you can find it in here, right? As I did on Tuesday, I had a 1 p.m. meeting, so I crossed this. And day after day, you have everything, right? Tomorrow, I'll be traveling to Connecticut, to Lime Rock, to see historic races there at the Lime Rock racetrack. So there are no office hours on Zoom tomorrow. And this is what I'm going to, Historic Festival 41. Okay? Three days of races and a concorso, with, all with historic cars. A couple of years ago, they invited me to wave the flag for the Porsche races, Porsches from the 1970s and 80s. Okay. Uh, and, of course, I put in here other things, right? The fall break, in case you, you forget, you want to, to show up and be all alone in here, or the Thanksgiving break, and as you can see, when it comes to, oh, sorry, next one, when it comes to the last week, you find or presentations, office hours, but you don't find classes, okay? We don't meet in the classroom that day, and the next week you find more days for oral presentations. 
and, and then you find the deadline, December 14th for your project. And that's when I can enforce a deadline. Because the day after your project is due, unless you were granted an extension, I can lock you out of editing the file. You'll be able to see the file, you'll be able to see the comments, you'll be able to add comments, because that's where I will also post the grades for participation, the grade for the uh, presentation, the grade for your project, and the grade for your final exam, right? And you can ask questions. So I can change your privileges, adjust your privileges as I need. And the exam will be kind of late, December 19th, Tuesday, 11.15, most probably in this very jolly place, okay? So you come here, you cry a little bit, then you wipe your eyes and you write the exam and everything is fine. I'll show you, of course, examples of the questions. The questions are not, talk to me about this. They create a context. They remind you of themes and topics. And, and then you have this packet with some potential examples to pick from. It doesn't mean that you can come to the exam without reading anything, because that day, even with four questions, there isn't a lot of time to read the packet, write the questions. You have to know a little bit yourself. Okay. What am I leaving out? Of course, lectures and readings, the main so I go to week one, for example, I have a list of topics, but I get inside the page for week one. And I find in here presentations, right? General introduction I used on Tuesday, presentation on the log bag. I find the YouTube videos of this week, first one. I put videos from last year, because for example, last year, I went more into details about the introduction. So, if you want to read the introduction by yourself, which is a required reading, fine. If you'd rather hear me talk about the introduction, then you click on the on last year's reading, you go to the part where I do the introduction, and you listen, you watch, okay? And assignments, you have here, again, the same links. So, these are the three pages that require reading, the introduction, the core concepts and definition where you have the terminology, right? I'm not going to go over that page. You do it yourself. It's a required reading. And last year, there was an essay question including a reference to this. You have a page about the love bug. You read that as a required reading. And then you have one more. It's an article, the future of automated society, because next week we talk about the future of the car. And see, it's a PDF, but in order to access it, you need to sign in, right? With your Stony Brook credential. And there is a reflection that is due September 8th, okay? It's, you have two options. The first options, the default options is, have cars lost their magic? Right? So you have the title, you have the length, and you have instructions. Right? Hopefully they're clear enough. Let's read them together to have an idea. With the help of your personal experiences and observations, discuss whether or not the automobile is still a technology which is presumed to possess some unique and magical qualities by virtue of its association with literary fiction, movies, TV series and cartoons, video games, popular toys, or even personal dreams and individual or family memories. Not all of them, but this gives you a sense of what you might be talking about, okay? Do you want to talk about the Batmobile because you dreamed about the Batmobile as a kid? Fine. You want to talk about your grandfather's station wagon because of the memories that you associate with that car? Fine, right? Don't, don't provide too many examples, but they can be personal examples. A few notes about the style, a few suggestions, the points, 3%, and an alternative assignment, which is based on a 
made for TV movie, only about 40 minutes, beautiful. And uh, which is available on Amazon Prime. If you have Prime, you don't pay. The, it's only 36 minutes, in fact. It's called The Magic of Cards in, on a Serpentine Road with the Top Down. It's a made for TV movies with um, Mini Driver. You recognize her face if the name doesn't mean anything to you. It's based on a series of articles by the New York Times in a rubric called Modern Love. And in fact, I've added the link to Amazon if you want to watch the movie. And the link to the New York Times if you want to read the original article and see the differences. Even the article is moving. It's the story, the article itself, of a real person, a woman who lost her husband but couldn't separate herself from, in the article, an Alfa Romeo. In the movie, it's a Triumph Stag, a British car. Because all the memories of her first big love are in that car. And, and there are some very poetic uh, moments in, in this uh, little film. So it's up to you. Of course, the New York Times has a paywall. If you want, otherwise, I can provide you with a copy of the article. Okay, and um, that would be it. So you know of the general introduction, right? It's a series of sections, just to explain the required reading presenting you how is the car, has the car developed as a technology? How is it still relevant? Was it more relevant in the past than now, etc.? Easy to read, you don't have to memorize the details, the numbers, of course, right? Well, tells you, for example, that Formula One is a global sport, right? Shows you that the top three drivers right now are one is Dutch, the other is uh, Mexican, the third is Spanish. So no Americans on top, that's really a global sport. Seven billion spectators, viewers, last year for about 20 Grand Prix races. Grand Prix races hold, held in 20 countries, right? So it gives you some sense of this phenomenon. Inspiration and core concepts, as I said before, is about the terminology. What, what does it mean? What is a technology, right? First of all, how you define a technology. It's not necessarily a machine. It can be anything, etc. So something else you can read on your own uh, with some examples. And finally, lost my... I was sent back to a different place. Finally, this is a page about the love bug with some links. I've included frames, which I do because I, I'm a cinema studies scholar. So these are almost 3,000 frames from the film taken at one or two seconds intervals to document the style of the film. Not that you have to do it. They're there if you want to. If you are, for example, a minor in film and screen studies. And then what I have is a synopsis with comments on the film, so that you have the whole film, but more importantly, some key dialogues, so you understand why this Disney film is relevant. Okay, but again, it's something you do on your own. And I added links both to Amazon Did I put Amazon? I don't see it. Well, I should have. But if you go to justwatch.com, it tells you all the streaming platforms for this film. Okay? So, three minutes for now. Just three minutes for, for, for questions. And then we'll skip on the class activity. I will not even introduce the movie now. 
because otherwise we won't be able to see enough of it today. So I can go back and talk about the movie later on, but right now, questions about the syllabus, about the class in general, any question, please. Yes, please. Yeah, so you said that for the assignment only, so I got this correct, that when uh, we type it up, are we going to say we do two dots and just copy and paste it? Yeah, exactly. Just want the writing, correct? Just, just make sure, as a courtesy to me, if you transfer it from another program, then format the title using heading one and format the rest of the body of your assignment using normal as the style. Right. Right? Does the um, written reflection go in from that the document also? Exactly. Everything. Everything that is written goes there from the written reflection to sometimes class activities uh, if need be. Right, so that I have one point of reference where I see your body of work and you get feedback from me on everything, right? Could be a grade, this is A, and or for, for a class activity, it could be excellent, good, very good. For my assignment, when I saw in week one where on the assignment, if this is an alternative writing assignment? Yes, so it's like either the magic of cars or a short review of this short films for TV uh, with Mini Driver from the series Modern Love on Amazon Prime. Okay. So you find that both of them listed under week one. And you choose one, it's up to you, one or the other, whatever you're comfortable with, depending on your style. So one is more personal. The other is the analysis of this short film for TV in reference to the car, right? right what is magical and mystical for the protagonist about this car that incorporates the memories of her husband and therefore she cannot bring herself to sell the car even though it's an old car, failing car. Yeah. For the analysis, do you want citations like for the movie? Like yeah, okay. if, if you want to, you can certainly do that. If you know how to do it, you can also take frames, stop the Amazon, uh, uh, movie and copy a, a particular frame that you're commenting on right and, and you paste it into your Google Docs file saying you you can see here uh, that uh, she's driving and the ghost of her husband ha appears in the back while in the front there are the former wife and the daughter of this that man right or you can see here the car but it's a shot from above and you can see the serpentine road and you can see the beautiful nature and you can understand why this drive has mystical powers. If you want to, it's up to you, but certainly you can quote from the dialogues, right? Again, I don't see this being done with the reviews because the reviews probably will be talking about the film in general, not the car in the film, but it's up to you. It's not a requirement that you have external scholarship. <coughs> okay, what else? And again, I don't want to limit your questions forever, but just for today and then we can go back. Yeah? Um, for the bigger movies, like The Love Boat, are we watching, like through multiple sessions, the whole movie in class? No. We, okay. So we'll have for. Longer films will have two weeks. We'll spend two weeks on them. So today we will we'll watch 15 minutes from it or so. And next Thursday we may watch 20 or 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So just the most relevant scenes to give you a sense of what the movie is about and how the car is presented in the film. Then it's up to you if you want to see the rest. For example, The Love Bug used to be available in every single library as a Walt Disney movie every local library from here to the city carried this, which may be still the case. Um, I don't know if it is on Prime because I bought it, so I can run it, but maybe it's free on, on Prime right now. I don't know. Justwatch.com will tell you. will tell you it's playing on 2B, it's playing on uh, Sony, etc. <laughs> So, 
it starts in 1968 and the movie is set up in the 1960s in, in the around the same period it starts with a crash derby race a crash derby race is a race where cars can crash into each other and therefore certain drivers are put out of the race this way it used to be popular until a few years ago for example you were you, you would be able, would have been able to go to the riverhead racetrack next to the tanger outlet and see these kinds of uh, weird races very american not to be found in europe okay and here we find the protagonist who's a kind of a has-been driver meaning someone who has peaked without becoming famous trying 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 to remember tell madison no uh, yeah, you're right, okay. Madison. Cool. I actually live near the Riverhead Race. Have you seen any um, of these races? No, not myself, but I did hear the drag races that take place, and I believe they still do occur. As I see once in a yeah, while. Yeah, they still race a couple of just the ovals. Put graffiti on it, and then eventually they're emptied out because they're basically well, sort yeah. of in the yeah. context. Yeah, sometimes you would go to Tanger and hear the roaring of the engines over there. Okay, so as I said, Jim. Jim Douglas, the protagonist, was a promising young driver but never became a champion. And you see him in a difficult, in a critical junction of his life. But everything will change when he, by chance, is connected to a little Volkswagen Beetle and the choice of the car was key. They started the movie without knowing which car they would use. But using the Volkswagen Beetle was the real uh, missing piece to the film. Once he finds that car, he doesn't know that the car is alive, that the car is sentient, that the car is like a pet. But through the movie, you see one, the, the movie is a, one big metaphor. You see how the identities of the protagonists, Jim, the woman who will become his companion, his mechanic and friend, their lives and their identities, the way they see themselves, the way they present themselves in the world, all change because of the car, because of the interaction with the car. So keep your focus on that. Of course, you find a lot of comedic scenes, cute scenes. It's also a love story. Yes, my dear. Wait, I, I think I mixed up maybe one or two films while we were talking. Is this the same film where a woman sees his her deceased husband the back of her car no that 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 was the uh modern love series movie with mini driver oh, okay. right no 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 there are no deceased husbands or ghosts in in yes. this particular one uh there was a semi-famous remake of this with lindsey lohan stay away from it don't watch it <laughs> you'll be scarred for life okay unless you're a big fan of lindsey which would open a whole sleuth of other issues which are best left unsaid. What's important to notice is that the car itself is not a magical being that comes with unlimited powers. They both change through their prolonged interaction. The car will become a winning car. He will become a famous winning driver but more importantly through the, his understanding of the vehicle he'll become a better man more mature and finally ready for a relationship with a woman they'll get married right because it's 1968 so the sanctity of marriage will bless this union but it will still be a threesome he she and the car they will all go on a honeymoon together we'll watch more from it next week so uh, we'll see you on Tuesday. If you need me, you can talk to me now. Thank you.